Hello and welcome to Warp Team Brick. And today's video is somewhat revisiting an old topic, which is landing on an asteroid. I've done this twice before, but that was in a different uh, solar system, and I was using the stock asteroids, which are parts and not slash to bodies. But this time I'm in Kerbal Scale Real Solar System, which does have a near Earth asteroid from real life uh, modeled in game. Uh, the name of said asteroid is on screen right now, as so I can see that I have no possibility of pronouncing it remotely correctly. Yeah, it's a real asteroid that was visited by a real spacecraft in real life, and uh, this uh, mission is in no way based off of that, I just wanted to have seen an asteroid. And so, oh, enough about the uh, target, we can uh, talk about it later. The uh, launch vehicle itself is pretty standard. And the probe, I'm not really sure where I was going with it. I took a, a stock probe core and put some uh, Blue Dog Design Bureau landing legs on it, took a stock antenna, stock antenna on it, and that's essentially it. And some solar panels, some RCS thrusters. Since it's a very small object visit we're visiting, it has very low gravity, and so RCS is essential for having just any sort of maneuverability. That's actually going to be useful later on because uh, some stuff's going to happen to our reaction wheels. A bit of a foreshadowing there. Yeah, and standard launch. Uh, I probably should have gone from uh, Vandenberg since this is a nearly polar launch. At least uh, with this launch profile, I actually may I would actually be able to see my house from this perspective, which uh, gives you some idea of where I live. But uh, at the same time, uh, it's a very uh, vague area that I was talking about. Anyways, moving on, I can start actually correcting our inclination, but uh, it's close enough that I don't think it's worth the Delta V. But we can uh, now get a, a nice view of the solar panel deployment. Isn't that a nice pattern? And uh, making heavy use of a uh, transfer window planner, I can now plot a trajectory to the asteroid. And yes, I'm just going to refer to it as the asteroid, because, uh, again, I cannot pronounce the name. And so, that's a standard maneuver plotting, so uh, no need to really show that. And so we can uh, start our burn. And uh, this thing, uh, this uh, craft is uh, definitely overbuilt for this uh, mission. In fact, uh, we can uh, use only this uh, top stage, or well, final stage, I should say for this for everything beyond the low earth orbit uh, but yeah we were able to use uh, some of the rain delta v in that uh, lower stage now there was some unwanted oscillation uh, during that burn but we get but we got through it and we're now on a trajectory you would take us to the asteroid with a uh, mid-course correction in about uh, 200 days and so we leave earth behind also, it's, it feels weird not uh, referring to the home planet as a Kerbin, but uh, this is only a second, to, well, no, the third time in a real solar system. Now, on the way, we're gonna have some part failures, and there's actually gonna be some quick saving and quick loading at various points, which is not shown due to unrelated issues. And uh, for some reason, the, the uh, failure status of our reaction wheel has changed, but uh, yeah, our reaction wheel is broke, which uh, caused this. And I activated the RCS, but uh, it didn't activate. I, I, I get that figured out at some point, for with some SES modes, the RCS doesn't work. But yeah, that uh, I don't figure that out now, and so now we have a, some difficulty performing this maneuver. However, we continue to approach the target. And, okay, so since this is such a small object, the sphere of influence is tiny, and uh, we're also going at a pretty good, like, a pretty high relative velocity, relative velocity to it. So, yeah, we're, gonna, we're actually going to start our orbital insertion burn a few uh, seconds before we enter the sphere of influence, which uh, you'll see later. You can see us, I uh, believe we now have our final encounter, a nice low periapsis, and you can see... Yeah, our uh, orbital insertion burn starts about 10 seconds before we enter the sphere of influence. I'm not 
actually gonna talk about this, the craft really quickly. Yeah, I really like how the Terrier engine integrates with that uh, adapter piece. Now we can start burning, and uh, here's the thing. It's a pointless retrograde relative to our current orbit, and not the orbit we'll have around the asteroid, which basically means we're currently running in the wrong direction, and I don't realize that. And so, well, with uh, this uh, type of mission, and well, with, with this, these circumstances, you need to ensure that your or like your orbital insertion burn is uh, as uh, quick as possible, because uh, yeah, if you um, if you don't get it done in time, you will definitely well, you're still on the escape trajectory, and you'll fly right past your target. And that is seems to be what's happening right now. Because uh, when we start burning the wrong direction, uh, well, we are not, we're not, uh, we haven't slowed down enough uh, relative to when we should be. I'm not sure if any of that made sense. Basically, we burned in the wrong direction, and then uh, now our maneuver has been um, all messed up. But uh, we are still uh, slowly inserting into the orbit, and we actually will get the uh, burn done in time. Not much to really say here. And there's something interesting is going to happen here as we get closer to the end of the maneuver. As you know, I'll start to throttle down. Oh, however, due to the. Just, again, due to how small the uh, sphere of influence is. Just the slightest overburn sent us on a retrograde uh, escape trajectory. And, uh, just, yeah, we're, all, we're, on we're on an escape trajectory, whilst moving only uh, 4 meters per second. And this, uh, like, uh, this uh, asteroid definitely puts uh, stock uh, getting to a shame. Because, okay. you know, I'm definitely going off topic here, and uh, I'm definitely running out of relevant things to talk about. But uh, the uh, first video on this channel was a Gilly mission, and I still remember it was a new experience having to actually uh, point it towards the uh, surface you're landing on to prevent having to burn towards the surface was uh, a new experience for me. This takes uh, this uh, asteroid takes us to another level because uh, again, just the slightest uh, the slightest uh, miss burn, and you're on an escape trajectory from it. And you can see there I was uh, using the RCS to uh, adjust our trajectory towards the south pole of the asteroid. The matter if this commentary is becoming incoherent is because I've already tried to record this six times. So we continue to approach the surface. And soon enough we'll just end the lower stage. Which will actually give us some impulse to start us uh, heading in the opposite direction. And so we'll have to use some RCS to uh, force us back down. But uh, we, for some reason, started spinning after that. And since we have no reaction modes, uh, I had to uh, carefully adjust uh, our uh, landing uh, time so that our, our single working solar panel would face towards the sun because we lost two of our, two of our three solar panels we uh, do here. Yeah, making use of uh, all of the uh, RCS uh, propellant can uh, slowly come onto the surface. Though, however, I'm pretty sure if you uh, did, uh, just, if you just deorbited yourself and let the craft uh, fall down to the surface, I'm sure it would land fine by, on its own. But yeah, we can come to a nice uh, controlled landing, and after toggling off that and opening uh, a highlight on the damaged parts, we can now uh, we can now have uh, landed on an asteroid. I want to actually uh, hop around the, just do some hopping around the uh, surface, but uh, we actually did use 100% of the RCS propellant. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video despite the incoherentness of this commentary. I want to uh, thank you for watching, please like and subscribe, and goodbye!